So I just recorded a whole video without recording. So that's awesome. <laughs> hey, what's up? Thanks for watching. I wanted to update you on my MRI results. And if you haven't really been following this, I've been having knee issues for like a year now. Uh, ever since I had knee surgery on my left knee for a meniscus tear. And that was my second meniscus tear. No, sorry, third meniscus tear surgery. The other two I had in junior high. So it lasted me quite some years up until now where I finally had some more issues along with some arthritis. Um, so I've been in and out of this office a bit with still with pain and swelling and my knee really blew up the other week. Uh, so I had my knee drained, they gave me a cortisone shot uh, and ordered another MRI. So this MRI said I have a small recurrent tear, uh, but it also says that I have arthritis, which, you know, it's not new, I know that. But I'm experiencing way more pain than I did pre-surgery. Uh, way more swelling. And it's been, it's been nine months now since I had surgery and it just hasn't gone away. <sighs> like they have been telling me that it will. And I'm frustrated because every time I go in there, it's either, it'll go away, whatever, just ice it, ibuprofen, you know. Um, luckily I got some relief the other day when they drained it and gave me a cortisone shot, but it's still, um, the fluid is already coming back. Uh, it's still swelling, it's still painful, even more so. So I just feel like something, something is not right or something is new, I don't know. To make a long story short, my surgical options are basically have another scope, but have it not really help much at all. In fact, it can make it worse. It's just going to be taking more meniscus out. And, you know, bone on bone is not nice. It's just not good. So really, it's like the scope really wouldn't do much for me. It would just be unnecessary. So my other surgical option would be a partial knee replacement, which at 31 years old, that's just like crazy for me to wrap my mind around. A uh, partial knee replacement can be like a good option as opposed to a total and it could last me up to like 20 years and it could give me the most relief of symptoms so it's like although that sounds crazy for someone like me who's super active and wants to return to feeling normal and thinking about having a sense of normalcy for hopefully another 20 years until i would need like a knee replacement that almost sounds like my best option um they also gave me the maybe non-existent option of stem cell injections. Uh, of course it's possible and I would definitely prefer this route over surgery, but insurance unfortunately does not cover it. So it's an option, but it's not. It's there, but not for me because I can't afford, I think it's like $2,500 per injection. and. I owe the IRS $2,500 right now, so um, not happening. <laughs> so those options are kind of out there. They basically just told me to stop lifting and uh, take it easy, which, you know, for an average person, maybe I would be okay with that as an average 31 year old who maybe had some recreational walks every now and then didn't work out or who didn't plan to get back on the bodybuilding stage or not just once but multiple times and for years to come to really strive to reach goals because I'm insane, I understand that. <laughs> once I set my mind to something, like I have tunnel vision. I don't, I just can't see anything else but the end goal. And for a knee to stop me from doing that, it's not, no, it's not gonna happen. That already, my brain is like already in switch off mode, but what completely turned it off was what the doctor decided to talk to me about next. And I'll bring up the notes here from the after visit. I won't say his name, but um, it says Dr. Blank, also discussed in detail with patient today, potential risk of hormone replacement therapy, and unknown association with progression of osteoarthritis with heavy hormone replacement. Uh, so, first of all, it's not heavy hormone replacement. 
my testosterone levels are that of a cis male. In fact, the last time I had my levels checked, they were at 549, if anyone's interested, which is in a completely normal range for a cis male. Uh, it's super frustrating. I felt like he just wanted to bring up my transition, uh, that maybe that, that this was some elephant in the room that he's just wanting to talk about, and this was his opportunity. It felt a little bit awkward to say the least, and it felt embarrassing because I didn't, I don't want to talk about being trans when it comes to my knee or when it comes to everyday life. I was just hoping that he could see me as a patient, not a trans patient, just a person with a knee problem or an athlete with a knee problem, not a trans person with a knee problem or just a trans person. Uh, it was more embarrassing too that there was a physician's assistant in the room with me and I feel like she was on the right hand side and it was just almost like I could feel the tension or see her body language change. At least I felt it was just like this tenseness or this awkward like, yeah, we're talking about this right now. Um, so as soon as that was being talked about, as soon as he started talking about the mechanics uh, between, you know, male and female skeletons or the, the way that the joints, uh, whatever, like the treatment plan is the same, but he wanted to discuss the differences in injuries. And I'm very well aware that women are more prone to ACL injuries, um, but this is a meniscus injury. Luckily, I didn't have any ACL injuries through my basketball career. and. Unfortunately, I just have a meniscus issue. Um, there's plenty of men who have meniscus issues. There's plenty of men who are on testosterone that he wouldn't have mentioned at all if it was just a cis male in there with a knee problem who took testosterone for hormone replacement. Um, so the fact that I found bringing this up so unnecessary really kind of just rubs me the wrong way to say the least and uh, at first, my reaction to this, I recorded a video and I was going to post it up here today, but I didn't end up posting it. It was just a little too vulnerable. So um, I did put it on my Patreon if you're all interested in seeing me be super vulnerable, but um, unfortunately you have to pay for it. <laughs> um, thanks to anyone who has watched that video. But um, I'm trying to, you know, remain less emotional about it, but I just don't like to be reminded that I'm gonna be seen as this trans person, even if I'm just coming in for my knee. Like at some point, I would like to just live in this world like a normal human being and be treated as an athlete or be treated as a patient, whatever. Um, but I don't wanna talk about my hormone replacement therapy for my knee. Uh, <laughs> so I, I emailed my doctor when I got home. I was a little nervous because I didn't want to overreact, but I just, in my <laughs> in my soul, I was like angry and just riled up. But I emailed my primary doc and she was super awesome. She called me and we talked about what happened and she's gonna refer me to someone else. Um, hopefully someone who's more sports medicine minded. Also, if she knows of anyone who is at least like more educated on you know, trans health. Um, she's gonna do a little bit of searching for me to send me to the right person. And uh, if anything, just a doctor who's gonna treat me as for a patient and not have to like look into anything related to my transition uh, or bring it up for no apparent reason. Uh, also just for someone to understand that I am not planning on giving up bodybuilding anytime soon and just to be treated more so as an athlete and not like a person who goes on, I don't know, a person who isn't very active or is okay with not being very active. <sighs> Anyways, um, I felt a lot more emotional yesterday, but it's kind of like today I feel better after talking to my doctor, knowing that she has my back. Um, I really wish that everyone had like at least one doctor that really had their back and I feel really grateful for that. So. That's why I live like an hour away now and I'm still like so 
adamant on keeping my primary care physician. That's the gist of my day, that's the gist of what's been going on in my life. Um, it's kind of turned into this, I don't know, I'm trying to stay positive, but it's frustrating. Yeah, it's frustrating. So anyways, this video has gotten super long. My battery is dying, so I'm gonna end it here. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them down below. Peace out, I'll see you next time.